Getting started with Fourscore on your iPad. The first thing you want to do is to put some pieces into Fourscore, and there are several ways of doing that. If you have them as PDF files, then you want to import those PDF files. And the way I do that is through Dropbox. So I have a Dropbox account, and um, so I will show you how to import from Dropbox. But you can also uh, go here to uh, tap on the upper right corner to open up this suitcase um, icon and you have several options in here one of which is the dark room um, which is right here and from the dark room you can turn on your camera uh, and actually take a picture of your uh, of your sheet music I'm going to cancel this because I'm not going to be doing that right now, but that's another way to enter these. You can also use a scanner, and uh, you, you can use the, the iPad as a scanner by taking pictures uh, with a scanning program. I find it easier just to do it right, right from within Fourscore, but you don't have uh, the option of making adjustments to the scan if you do it that way. So um, my the, the most successful method I have used is to do that in uh, daylight where you have nice even light and to make sure that the uh, that the iPad is set up reasonably um, uh, appropriately for the uh, for the angle, etc. And um, I've actually uh, done large scores that way by just having the iPad on a tripod um, or a stand of some sort and uh, set the whole system up and then just you know click page turn the page click page you know click the camera turn the page click the camera etc and you can do that but anyway so to go from Dropbox uh, now one of the things that's um, uh, again you click on the suitcase and go to services which is uh, just under all add scores and uh, I'm already in Dropbox if you uh, start off you'll see let me go back to the beginning you'll see this and you would select Dropbox and then of course if it's the first time you do it you'll have to log in and then it'll show you what you have and um, so at this point uh, I have all kinds of stuff in Dropbox here and not all of it is music so let's go to my music folder and say I want, uh, actually all this stuff is already in, but uh, let's just say I want to import um, the Gibbons Fantasia 6. So I'm going to tap on that. And when I do take a look at that, you see that circle, um, actually it's saying I already have it, and uh, do I want to duplicate it? And I'm going to say I'm going to uh, make a duplicate of it because I don't want to mess up the one I've got. But um, so I click duplicate, and now that has been imported into Fourscore that quickly. And so the next thing I want to do is uh, is click done on the upper right corner here, and then click the half note icon in the top left of the screen, uh, which is your library. And now if this is the first thing you've imported, that's the only thing you're going to see here. But I've got a whole bunch of stuff. And notice that I am sorted by composer right now. If you look um, in the, a library, I'll talk about libraries later. Uh, and then I can sort by composer, genre, instruments, or label. I'm sorted by composer. But right now, this one doesn't have any composers. So if I click on the bottom here, it'll go to no composer. And you can see I have two things in here with no composer. The one I'm working on right now is the Gibbons. If I click on this little blue circled arrow on the right, it will open up the metadata section, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to just click on the file, which opens it right here, and now I have that file open. But I want to uh, add some metadata to this. So I can do that by going back. If I click on the upper right of the screen, it'll bring back that um, that screen, and I can click on that um, that arrow there on the right side. Or from here, if I click up near the top and then all the way at the top where it says Gibbons Fantasia 6, if I, if I tap there, it'll bring up that same thing. And sometimes it's easier to do it that way. It keeps the um, document open. Now notice that um, the, con the convention I have used in the past is the title includes the composer's name, space, hyphen, space, and then the name of the piece. Uh, and then 
Uh, that's just a convention I've used for various reasons, which is really kind of outdated, but um, nevertheless, I've got over 2,000 pieces in here, most of which are, for, are done that way, so I'm sticking with that, even though I have since discovered that it really isn't necessary. I can go into that later also. I'm going to tap on the Composer section, and um, this is Gibbons, so if I start typing G, I, B, you'll notice down here on the lower left, uh, once I got to um, something that was Gibbons, it included all of that information. So I can just tap there. But of course, if this is the first one you've done, you have to type it all out. And um, the convention that I use is the composer's name, first name, last name, space, uh, and then his dates in parentheses. Um, and if you uh, have more than one in there, these three dashes on the left, if I tap that, it will show Actually, if I, okay, if I back up here to before I got to GIB, let's say I just have to G and t tap on these three dashes, it'll show everything that has a G. So you can pick from that list, but you can also, uh, of course, if this is the first one you've done, then you don't have any. So GIB, and I'm not going to type all of it, I'm just going to tap right there, and that fills that in. Genre of Gibbons is Renaissance. If it's the first one, you'll have to type it in, but notice that that's the only R I have. So if I tap here um, on the lower left, it fills it in with Renaissance. Now, instruments, um, I have always put in the number of instruments there. And um, you can put in more, in these fields, you can put in more than one entry. So if I know that this is, for example, two altos, I'm going to do a comma and then um, caps lock and a, A, to indicate it's two instruments and it's two altos. I need a comma between it because those are two separate items in the instrument field. Um, so, go away, HuffPost. Thank you. Um, and labels is something that you can use for whatever um, is useful uh, that you might want to sort on. So I have a label that's things that I want to practice. I put practice in there. Uh, think you know things that I'm working on, and um, then I can show you some other time how to get into that. Uh, rating, um, I won't go into right now. Difficulty is something that basically what the way I use that is uh, one uh, dot means something that I can sight read pretty easily. Some two dots, two dots means something that I can play, but um, I mean I, I may have to work on it a little bit. Three dots is something that's difficult. So right now I'm going to just not bother doing that at all. Time I don't bother with. Key, I only use that when I have the same piece in more than one key. Now, this bottom section, libraries, this is really important. Uh, you, wouldn't, you won't have any libraries yet, so you won't have anything to set up in there, but I do, and I need to make sure that I set this in the Duet library. I will talk about libraries in another um, installment. Uh, Okay, so I'm putting it in my duet library, and I have said that it's two instruments, and that they are AA. I don't actually know that they are. Um, so actually, just to be safe, I'm not going to even put AA, because I really don't know that unless I actually take a look at the piece. So um, that's what I need in here, and then I can click Done, uh, which makes that go away, and then I can just tap somewhere else on the screen to get back to there. Now, I've got this bar across the top. If I tap somewhere in the middle of the screen, that will go away, and this is the, the situation you're in when you want to play it. And if it's more than one page, if you tap anywhere on the right side of the screen, it will take you, I'm in half page turns, if I tap up here at the top, uh, and I'm sorry you can't see my finger tapping, but I tapped near the top, and you can see up in the very top here it says half, and I can uncheck that so that I do whole page turns, go back tap in the middle to get the full screen, now if I tap on the right side, it will turn. The, it'll get me the next page. Tap on the right side to get the next page. You can also swipe. So I just swiped left to go to the previous page, swiped left to get the previous page. And you can also swipe down or up. I swiped down to get the next page, swiped up to get the, next, the previous page. So those are all different ways of changing pages um, if you don't have a foot pedal to do it for you. So um, that's basically how you get a file into there. Um, we'll look at other things in the future.